The great news this weekend is, of course, that Matt Keane has distanced himself from uh, the Liberal Party's Hallelujah. push towards nuclear. This is good news because what this means is Peter Dutton is definitely going to win the next election. <laughs> the further, the more Matt Keane disagrees with you, the more likely you are to be successful in politics. That's the basic rule of thumb. So we have the uh, Libs getting close, pushing more and more towards nuclear, which is great. The next election, hopefully, will be a very, very clear choice for the people of Australia and they will make this choice based on either you go nuclear to wealth and prosperity and cheap electricity, cheap energy and a booming economy or you pursue this madness of renewables which means blackouts, which means uh, money down the drain, soaring uh, uh, bills for your uh, electricity prices and so on. That's the choice for Australia, nuclear versus renewables. Fantastic. Bring it on because this will put Peter Dutton in the lodge in my opinion, Rita. Well, yes, but not Matt Keane's uh, opinion. He, his fine sort of analysis is that, uh, yeah, we, we, we should rethink this nuclear strategy. I wonder why that is. Could it possibly be, James, because so many of the people who are heavily invested in renewables, and uh, a lot of those people are fans of Matt Keane, uh, can see their investment, their taxpayer-funded, subsidised investments, well, uh, being blown out of the water. Because if you have nuclear, if you've got a reliable, cheap, and also it's baseload power, it's consistent power, it's not reliant on weather, then why do you need renewables? Why do you need windmills? Uh, why do you need solar farms? Why do you need any of that with the cost and the objections from, from people in, in, in well, regional areas when you've got reliable baseload power. So I can just see that entire renewable sector being blown up and there's a lot of people who are very heavily invested in that sector. There are, and there's a few interesting points on this. I mean, you know, this week there was this big scandal, at the, not scandal, but just sort of big kerfuffle, I guess you'd say, at the beginning of the week when it took three ministers and two Dassault Falcon jets to fly <laughs> yeah. up to the Hunter Valley to read a press release. So you know, <laughs> this is pretty amazing, all about global warming, and I thought that was pretty interesting. But what they were talking about, though, was a billion-dollar fund to get a solar panel industry started in uh, Australia, and that involves people like AGL, Mike Cannon-Brooks, uh, Malcolm Turbull, I think, is involved with this as well. The question to me, though, is if, you know, this solar industry is the way of the future, if renewables are the way of the future, this should be a business case that stacks Absolutely. up on its own, but it's not. And you know why China dominates? It's not nice to talk about it. The reason why China dominates the solar panel market is that, A, they use slave labor in mm. uh, Xinjiang province, and B, they've got no environmental controls for this incredibly dirty, polluting process. Yes. So, you know, it's very expensive to do these things in Australia. The conversation that needs to be had now, of course, because Peter Dutton is forcing the nuclear issue, the issue isn't even so much now about the nuclear plants and where they're built and when they're built, as it is that now suddenly all of the numbers and the assumptions of the renewables lobby now face scrutiny. And the more they face that scrutiny, we realize the numbers actually don't they stand add, up. The add numbers up never all. added up. We knew this from the start. You only had to look overseas for like other countries. But now there's that a point foolish. of comparison. Absolutely. The, it, they, the numbers don't stack up. The... They never think about what comes next, and they're just finding that out with EVs, where they just thought there's going to be this explosive growth in EV demand, everyone's going to be driving EVs. Now they're discovering, oh, wait, once the warranty on the battery uh, runs out, these cars have zero value. No one wants to buy a car that potentially you'll have to spend 20, 30, 40,000 to replace the battery. So th they never sort of even think five to 10 years down the track, <laughs> let alone 20 or 50 years, this... where they're coming up with this net zero lunacy. Bring on this election. The teals will be destroyed, uh, Labor will be out. This is the issue nuclear versus renewables, and nuclear will win. That's my prediction.